Hey folks, how are you? Alan Schnur here. So, I'm standing outside in front of one of my apartment buildings, and what I love about this, these videos is, I can the concepts that I'm going to teach you, I can actually show you because I own the buildings. It's a little windy out here. I'm standing outside on a major road. It's called Broadway, and it runs right into Highway 45. One of the concepts that I want to share with you today is the difference between what I call a farm play and a treasure chest play. And a treasure chest play is, you know, if I can make an analogy, is you find this box. It's old, nobody wants it, it's locked up, it's corroded, it's dirty, it's rusted, and you know, you kind of, you break it open and you open up that box slowly in hopes of, you know, cleaning off the box and looking into it and, you know, you find your gold, you find your jewels, you find your, your diamonds, whatever you're looking for, it's in that box. Well, that's what I found here with La Montreal because this deal, unbelievable situation. I bought this deal for $300,000. That's $5,500 a unit. It's a 55 unit building. And let me tell you something, the dirt that these buildings are on are worth a lot more than that, even after I rehabbed it. The building sits in between two bus stops, one that way and one that way. And across the street, we got United States Post Office. Incredible situation. And then we got a clinic right across the street too. So. I bought this building for three hundred thousand dollars, you know, and I, you know, I shined it up. What can I say? Carpet, tile, paint. I did a rehab job, and we'll talk more about that inside. But what's, you know, the incredible opportunity? I'm going to show you something that I spent six months doing, and then I'm going to show you another building this afternoon that I just walked over, you know, walked right into, and it was cash flowing right away. But the great thing about these these treasure chest places because once you stabilize it, once you fix it, once you do everything that you need to do, you've captured all that equity. You didn't have to pay someone else for, for cleaning it up. You did it yourself. And more importantly, you captured the cash flow on the equity that you created out of thin air. Do you see what I'm saying? You took something for $300,000, you put a few hundred thousand dollars into it, it's worth $1.6 million, and we're not selling it, we're just cash flowing it, right? This property makes between ten dollars and $20,000 a month net. Cash flow, cash flow. It's got close to four to $500,000 in revenues a year, and makes ten dollars to $20,000 net. Here's my leasing office. Let's go in the leasing office and talk a little. Dropbox. You gotta love these things. You know what that sounds like? That's checks. I wanted to show you some before shots so you can see the kind of work we did here. Um, check this out. Can you imagine this? Nobody wanted it. It was like, nobody wanted it. It's boarded up forever here. You know, it's kind of like the eyesore of the neighborhood. And, um, well, I'll tell you the story how I found it in a second. Look at this. <laughs> Can you believe it? I know it looks like something you never want to get your hands on, but quite frankly, you just hire a general contractor. We'll talk more about that in one of my vid uh, another video. So here we are. Oh, there's my there's my little Jakey, kind of doing a smell test, cleaning up the property here. It's a little too young to put to work, but you know I'm trying to teach him the business young. You just saw the outside, so. You know, so they had this mansard over on, on, the, on the sides of the building, kind of like roofing on the side of the building. So we got rid of that junk right away and put up beautiful hardy plank and painted it yellow. Building's coming along. So check this out, the final product. Unbelievable. You see this? Who would have thought? So if you can use your imagination and you, you, know, you can transform something nobody wants into something that looks like this, you can make a lot of money. So, you know, you got like a happy board with the month special, the monthly specials on them. You got all your uh, certificate of occupancy, uh, uh, all your certificates in the back that you can run the business, timesheets, um, three day vacate notices. Um, she's got an HR manual over there, monthly petty cash file, make ready status board. Um, I have it all online, so I see it in, on, online in the morning when I wake up. So it looks like she's got two vacants here. I think one's rented, so um, she's doing good. This building's really like 100%. Um, 
It just, uh, you know, you get caught up in turnovers sometimes. So uh, I'm gonna, let's go out to the playground. I want to show you the playground I play in. It's an awesome playground. Kids like the playground? Yes? Awesome. This building that we're going to, two or three years ago, it sold for 3.6 million. And it had 3.1 million debt on it. So the debt was foreclosed on. The bank took back the property at 3.1 million. And then they tried to auction it off for 2.5. The problem with the auction that they had was they were demanding the person that won the auction that day to put down 10% hard money non-refundable. Makes it kind of difficult because most people in this situation in purchasing a 162 unit building need financing. And it's, ha it's hard to have that all lined up on the spot. So their auction failed miserably. Somehow I was next in line and I bought the building for 2.1 million. Very fortunate on this building. It was hit by the hurricane and they did a hurricane two years ago and they did a million dollar rehab that they just finished. Now this property was in, in pristine condition and most people would say, well then why did it go bankrupt? Well the reason why it went bankrupt is because the parent company in Florida got in trouble. It had nothing to do with this asset, they just needed it, they needed to get rid of it. Um, so I was at, uh, in the right place at the right time. The building next door just sold for $25,000 a door. I just purchased this for around 13000 a door. The building next door needs a lot of work. The buildings are very comparable. Um, mine's in better shape right now. It happened very quickly. Matter of fact, I was in Cairo um, a few weeks ago in a very intense seminar. And I excused myself from the seminar. I went to the fifth floor of the building, the Four Seasons Hotel in Cairo. And I sat down and I put on my uh, Skype earphones and a microphone and I was visually there at the closing and I was wiring money around and it was just unbelievable what I, what I accomplished in one or two hours still while traveling all around the world taking care of my personal life. So let's go check out the building. Let's walk down here and... Uh, three stories and the the driveways were recently repaved and you can tell the, uh, the carports too which is a, a huge luxury a farm play I call it a farm play because you know, it's an analogy. You know, the, the farm, it's, it's been planted. The, the barn is just freshly painted red. The structure's nice and strong. The, the animals are happy. The cows are giving milk. The chickens are laying their eggs. And, and that's what this place is. I didn't have to do anything when I got here. All I did was just, you know, take over. This particular property um, was in receivership. Now, Receivership is basically you have you have the bank over here who lent somebody money and then you have a person on this side or a corporation that no longer can afford to pay for the property. And you got a five hundred to a thousand people that live in this complex. So a judge steps in and tries to kind of balance out the situation, but the judge takes over. Clearly that the clearly the owner needs out. He's in foreclosure, he's giving the property back. But, you know, the judge helps create the exit and, and, and pretty much sets the tone and, and creates the plan. The judge appoints a receiver. Some receivers are third-party management companies. So that's what was happening here. There was a management company here running the building like they owned it um, under the judge's authority. And a, a, a building like this, that kind of mess... I mean, that just wipes away so much equity out of the deal. I mean, everybody wants to get this off their books. So then you come along and, you know, you, you pick one up. It's, it's, it's the low-hanging fruit. It can make you so wealthy. This is one of those secrets that I told you I was going to share with you. 
I bought three properties in the last eight months in receivership. Wow, what a day, huh? I just love going over those apartment buildings to get me so pumped up. It makes me feel so good about my future. So uh, I'm going to call the day short because I just got a phone call from a broker. I've never actually closed any deals with, but he knows the area I like and, and the, the buildings that I'm looking for. And he just told me that he listed recently a foreclosure on LoopNet, loopnet.com. I love the website. I think it's a great learning tool for you folks. And uh, I'm going to go home to my home office I just right moved now. into this new community and, around um, a year, year and the software. And it's free. And it's an awesome up, learning tool. And I'm going to show you how I use it to find some apartment buildings. And I'm going to show you how easy it is for you to use it to find apartment buildings. And how it's just going to educate you and make this business so simple for you. I got to be careful with this. My wife doesn't want to be filmed. This is my little reading corner. I like it. Got this kick ass view. Sorry for the mess. I wasn't planning on having you guys in my office today. But, um, so we're going to check out LoopNet right now. We're sitting here looking at LoopNet right now. And I'm going to pull up that property my broker told me about. So, First of all, it's a free service, so just get by the disclaimer there. If it's something you folks want to sign up for in the future, that's fine. You'll get first look at new properties. For now, we're just using this as a training tool. So first, you want to start off on the upper left-hand corner where you're going to choose multifamily for sale. The first drop-down on the left-hand side, multifamily for sale. Not just for sale or for lease. You want to take multifamily for sale, the first choice. And then to the right... You can pick your county and your state. I'm going to be looking at Pasadena, Texas right now. And I'm going to click on search. Again, there's another disclaimer just trying to get you to join. Just close that disclaimer window. Okay, there it is. We're on page one of one. Pasadena, Texas, multifamily properties for sale. LoopNet has found eight. And I want to look up first line, Pasadena, Texas. Hoo hoo. That's what I love. Recent foreclosure. REO, value-added property with upside potential. Bring it on. First line's 122 units. So let's click on the picture. Here's what I do first. So we're looking at first line, 1120 Red Bluff, Pasadena. We're looking at the price. So they want to sell it for $2 million. Look at the number of units, 122 units. Do the math. They do it for us. Each unit will be, is, they are asking for $16,393.44. Um, Two-story building, year built, 1965. That's what I look at first. And the occupancy doesn't really scare me, but let's, let's just take a look at that. Occupancy, so it's less than half full. Tells me there's a lot of things going on. Well, we know it's a, we know it's a foreclosure. Nobody wants to spend money on it. People are moving out, and things probably aren't getting fixed. So that also means it's distressed and you're going to have to go in there and probably fix up half of the units, make them ready for new people to move in. So keep that in mind. So not all properties on the left-hand side, by the way, bottom left-hand side, the attachments, not all properties on LoopNet will show this. And when they do, it's great learning information, folks. So look at it. So the first, the first PDF you see there on the left-hand side is a broker disclosure. Nothing very important. Um, operation statements or your financials. So print them out. Take a look at them. In some of my other videos, we'll go through case studies of financials of my buildings. Um, this particular building, they, they, they include the rent roll. I took a look at it. Um, you know, I want to see who's living there. I want to see when they moved in. And uh, moving down on the left-hand side, highlights. I go right to the highlights, too. Recent foreclosure. Love to see it. Located in Pasadena. I love buying there. There's, there's lots of plants, lots of refineries, lots of petrochemical companies. Um, and strong barrier to entry for new construction. Yes, I know that. I own a lot of property there. There's just no more room to build. So I love to find areas like that so I don't have to worry about something new popping up. Um, certificate of occupancy underway, so they're, they're trying to get their, their occupancy 
certificate, which basically says it's safe to live here. We've complied. Come on in. Um, buyer must provide their own financing. So they're letting us know up front this isn't going to be some kind of owner finance deal. So moving on down, description, recent foreclosure, REO, value add, kind of the things I've been talking about, right? This is my farm play if I would do this deal. Financial summary, more down to the left-hand side, scrolling down, pro forma. Now this is someone's best guess. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't bet the farm on this best guess, but this is what they're telling us over at the brokerage shop that's trying to sell the property. Um, they're saying in a perfect world, you can collect $712,000 in gross revenues. And if, you're, if you can operate it under what they're projecting, you'd spend 475,000 and change. And the net operating income, you'd end up with 236,000 and change. Folks, NOI, we'll go over that again um, in another video. That doesn't include debt service. So it would be, you know, $236,000 minus your debt service. And we'll go over that again, like I said, in another video. We just don't have enough time. So, okay, don't get freaked out. Um, maybe there's a lot of things here you, you, you don't know. It's okay. There was a point in time where I didn't know this either, and I'm not a financial genius. You just want to learn the basic facts. $2 million, 122 units. Go back to the top of the page. Take a look at the pictures. Here's what I like, and here's what I'd really like to see you do. On the right-hand side, I know Matt, actually. On the right-hand side, it says, please send me additional information about this property. You can reach me at. So it's like instant messaging. Put, you know, put your little message in there. Hi, my name is Joe Smith, and I'm very interested in this property. Could you tell me more? Um, I'm a little new at this. And what else is in the area? You know, just start some kind of rapport with the broker. Start the relationship. And this way, the broker can show you some other comps in the area and let you know what else is for sale, what's the going price, stuff like that. Uh, what I also like to do on the bottom right-hand side, more towards the middle of the page, I like to send myself this link so I have it in my email. So send it to a friend, and you would get this listing sent to you. It's been a fun day. I really like going to those properties. So one of the questions I get a lot is about lending. People have so many questions about who's lending, you know, are life insurance companies lending, or local regional banks, or the big banks lending, or conduits, are they back? Well, listen, stay tuned for next video because we're going to go into that. I'm going to also show you how you folks can get involved with deals with no money down buying apartment buildings. You see that button over there? we got a webinar coming up. Make sure you sign up for that because I'm going to do something really special for that. I'm going to start looking at some of your deals some of your deals. So go find some on LoopNet. Go do some keyword searches on Google. Remember, receivership, uh, short sales, REOs, bankruptcy, special servicing, you name it. Find a special deal because I want to next. I want to put together a, far, a, a farm play, a treasure chest play. Let's see how much we can make. We're going to look at the cash flow. Bring me the broker's phone number. Bring me the broker's name. I'm going to call them up. We're going to see if we can do this live. If not, I'll pre-record it and we'll play it during the webinar. So, like I said, I'll stay tuned. I'll see you next time. And we can cash flow your dreams.